Joyce Elizabeth Hedlin was born on June 1, 1943, at the Warren Hospital, Warren, Minnesota. The second of five children, born of Carl Johan, Ferdinand, and Lola Genevieve Horgan Hedlund. She was baptized at McCree Lutheran Church, located on the land donated by her grandpa, Horgan, with uh, Aunt Alice and Uncle Arnold Brokey as her sponsors. She was confirmed at Our Savior's Lutheran Church, Warren. She was later baptized at the Independence Baptist Church in Anchorage, Alaska, where she was a member. Her sculpture of verses was John 15, 17. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. <coughs> Joyce graduated from the Warren High School in the spring of 61. She was briefly attended at Moorhead State University in Moorhead, Minnesota, until a rheumatic fever cut her, short, her studies short. After spending months in recuperation, she was employed by Reinhardt Brothers of Fargo. While working with Reinhardt, Joyce met Ken Smith. Joyce and Ken Smith were married on June 3, 1967. Their vows lasted 54 years, just six weeks short of 55. They lived in Fargo, North Dakota for them a number of years before moving to Alaska. In the late 70s, Joyce worked as a certified screener at the Anchorage International Airport, and Kirk Kin worked as an LAO for the FAA and Alaska Transportation, also of the Anchorage International Airport. <coughs> Joyce was a gift to seamstress along with a beautiful embroidery and counted, counted cross-stitch pieces. She won many grand champion ribbons and cross-stitch at the Alaska State Fair. Joyce blessed families and friends with her gifts of beautiful cross-stitch sewing and ceramics. She was always thinking of others. She enjoyed growing African violets indoors and flowers outdoors all over the yard. She had a special artistic touch. <laughs> After moving to the Matsu Valley to operate a satellite store in Big Lake until they retired, then enjoyed placer mining together for over 25 years and had a mining claim north of Talkeetan, Alaska for 21 years. Joyce was preceded by her grandparents, her parents, and her godparents. She is survived by her husband, Ken Smith, her sister, Grace Hedlund of Detroit Lakes, her brother, John, and his wife, Linda Hedlund of Rio, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Sister Mary and husband Rod Patterson Hedlund of Thief River Falls, Minnesota. Sister Sarah Hedlund of Warren. Granddaughter and niece Stephanie and husband Dan Baker. Special nieces Erica and husband Jadon Shervin Hedlund under Uncle Roger and Aunt June Hedlund of California, plus numerous nieces, nephews, and cousins that you all held dear to her heart. All right, at this time we call Joyce's brother forward for reading of memories. Okay, to uh, Ken, Sarah, Grace, John and Joyce, his family and friends. This is from Evodia Horgan Balak, daughter of Magnus and Ebba Horgan, and Joyce's first cousin. We are so sorry that we are unable to come for Joyce's celebration of life and burial. I have thought a lot about her since she passed away in April, and will share a few of those memories with you. Grace, Joyce, and I did a lot of did a lot together growing up, playing house, making mud pies behind their home, and play, playing paper dolls on the stairs in their house. We went to country school together, 
and when it closed, we rode the bus into school and Warren. One summer during harvest, Joyce was at our house with me and my mom was making bread. My dad needed mom to go to town to get a part for him, so mom left the bread making and baking to us. We were pretty proud of our finished product. In adulthood, many miles often separated us, so we kept in touch through letters and look forward to her visits. We're thinking of all of you and sending our sympathy, prayers, and love. Bodhi and Norm Balak. Now I do this with some funerals. If I could just go through the group and have you share one word, one word that reminds you of Joyce or a situation you encountered with her. One word, first one that comes to mind. We won't make you do the first word. We will start right here. One word. Uh, humor, sense of humor. <laughs> Laughter. Smile. Gifted. Flat Stanley. Her smile. Her love. Attentive. Compassion. Unforgettable. Humor and laughter has already been done, so next one for me is kindness. Uh, her seamstress ability. I remember in 4-H and such, and it continued on. More than one word. That's okay. Okay. Over here, one word. Flowers. <laughs> Friendship. Good. You know, that was a pretty good summary of what I've heard about her from so many different locations. The service from Alaska that you shared with me that was recorded, uh, the people I've talked to, and the things I've read. Um, we'll talk about it more in the message, but first I'm going to read from Scripture. Now, I didn't expect that I was going to read Psalm 121 instead of Psalm 23, but it makes sense. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Now, we've just encountered a going out and going forth with Joyce. She came out of us here on earth to go forth into eternal life, heavenly life with God. And I can just, in my mind, imagine her saying, okay, I'm with God. God is with you. Now, let us rejoice and be glad in that. Now, I was out in the lobby here before the service started, and I wanted to talk about Joyce when the time came, and I wanted to talk about, you know, she was baptized out at McCray Lutheran 
as a kid, and her parents promised to bring her up knowing the Lord, knowing God, knowing how God loves her, forgives her, is there to be a needer, need, uh, helper in her time of need. As she got older, she was confirmed here at our Savior. She confirmed her faith. She said, this is what I believe. This is what I want. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, came here to earth to save us from our sins, to give it possible for us to have forgiveness and eternal life. And she lived that life. If you go into the entryway, there's a section just after you go down the ramp of confirmation pictures. 1958, you will see her in the front row at the far right, smiling. Beautiful smile on her face. Now, as she went through life, she also in the independent Baptist church was rebaptized by immersion. Again, confessing her faith, turning things over to God. Now, what I find interesting is God gifts us at times to be his hands, his mouth, his feet. And from the words I heard from you here, she was very gifted in that way. Now, I'm told she didn't talk that much all the time. She smiled. She grinned. <laughs> she laughed. But she was a talented seamstress. I was just shown some of her counted cross stitch that won awards at the State Fair in Alaska. Now, there's one thing where you can learn things, and when you learn them, you can do them well. But there's another thing when God is with you and using those things that you've learned to do his will. And from what I can tell, that was the way with Joy. She had the spiritual gift, the artistry that went into that, but also the care and loving. Now, I brought with me, because I'm told for birthdays, at her church, she gave aprons. So I went and found one of my aprons with counted cross stitch. Yeah, it's, it's not at her level of cross stitch. In fact, I heard on the video that she had actually, for a family for their baby, had stitched leather moccasins shoes for the baby because it had no shoes. And they were just incredible. That is a gift from God. That is a gift that she, from God wanting that to be important, gave. Now, I'm not going to put this on because I ended up holding a microphone. But I will lay it over here by the baptismal font. And we'll talk some more. You see, when God uses you in that way, it feels good. She smiled. No, it wasn't that her entire life was easy. You know, the church that she, you know, grew up in, well, McRae Lutheran Church is now over at the county fairgrounds in the History Center area. And then our saviors, she was here, and then she graduated and went to Moorhead State. And that was going to be wonderful for her, except she got rheumatic fever. But God makes lemonade and other wonderful things out of lemons. She met a certain gentleman who served as her husband for six weeks less than 55 years. And 
that was good. She also had where she started losing her sight and was blind, but you know, through the doctors and whatever, I guess for six months she had to only look in a certain way so that that sight could be healed, but her sight was restored, even for the brief time. And when you look at what the ministry God had given her of her art, working the aprons and other things, God was telling her he wasn't done with her yet. God had more to think of for her. And that's ended up being eternal life with God. Leaving behind all the things we're rejoicing in today, the time she had with us, the gifts she gave us. Don't always have to say a lot of strong words to say something about caring. All our God loves us, cares us, made it possible for many to have joyce in their lives, leaving behind some stuff that we can look at and smile at different times. For that, we give God the glory, give thanks to God, and also say it's okay to miss her, it's okay to cry, because that's a sign that she was loved just as she loved you. Amen. At this time, we will sing In the Garden, one verse, followed by one verse of Because He Lives.
At this time, I invite you to turn to page 282 at the front of your hymnal. You will also find inserted within the back cover a copy of the Apostles' Creed. It's a creed that was developed in the first couple hundred years of the church to explain in one form what we believe, what God is, what God does. So let us begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing beautiful Savior. Let us pray. God, we thank you for being with us today and gathering us here as we rejoice in Joyce's life, her time among us, the lessons she taught us about you. And God, we love her and you love her and we give thanks that she's with you for eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, be with each and every person here. Some have gathered, traveled long distances to be here during the time. And we ask you, may they have a God-pleasing and soul-filling life while they are here. And Lord, please bring them back to their homes safe and healthy and happy. God of mercy and God, please be with the people of this world. Help there be peace. Help there be love shown. Help others to help each other so that they are not alone. Let them be your servants. God of mercy. God, we give you thanks for everything, and we ask you to look upon us with favor. When your son Jesus was here, he taught us to pray. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us command Joyce to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Joyce. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own flock, of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Bring her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. I'm told there was a tradition in Joyce's family. At the end of the gathering, you'd gather round and hold hands and sing, Blessed be the ties that bind. At this time, I invite you to please stand, and we might have to squiggle a little bit, but let us hold hands and sing Blessed Assurance. Thank you.